This is about men whores and abandonment issues. The content may be offensive. Listener discretion is therefore advised. They call women bitches and hoes as they're projecting because they know that they are bitches and hoes. Unsafe sex practices with no barriers, ejaculation inside of her, her, her um, cavities, they come, they come, they come, and they keep coming in her. They lack the capacity to love, but they can have endless sex with various partners sometimes even ones who are just picked up on the side of the street because as my ex said to me he complained one day he we were actually on the phone he's on the phone talking to me and he sees i guess an attractive female and i don't know what makes an, a woman attractive to them because anyone i think is attractive to these guys he's talking to me on the phone and he sees a female and he feels a need to speak to her, compliment her while he's on the phone with me. And he's talking to me like quite innocently, like that's no big deal. That what he did is something that he often does. He sees women and he feels he must um, approach and engage them. And she didn't respond favorably to him which upset him. That's when I realized this guy's got some issues. He obviously was perhaps, I don't know, abandoned by his mom when he was a little boy, when he was growing up. He did not receive his mother's love, care, attention, or affection. And so now, as he's older, he is seeking all of what he never received from his mom in just passing females right they lack the capacity to love they are over friendly and seeking conquests now just last night i had it and funny he happened to be a libra and i'm talking last night to my other friend who's these libra males they i attract them but i'm so different from them you know it's so weird so this one he he's been thinking for years he's gonna bed me and I, the more I talk to him, the less I'm interested. So the one last night, he said that um, basically he usually is dealing with, he's usually dealing with at least three women at a time. As he's getting older, he's realizing and admitting that even three women are a bit much for him to juggle. And the reason being that, well, it's difficult for him to remember their names. And each of them have a story, whether it's their problems at work, their problems with their friends, their problems with their families, with their mom. So they confiding in him, you know, he's trying to listen to them and support them. But it's difficult because he mixes this one with that one. And, you know, Susie's issues may be mistaken for Pamela's issues. So he and then what he ends up doing is. In effect, he says, just lumping them all together so they become this one big thing, you know, and they're no longer someone or someone unique or someone special. They're just another hole, another orifice, another pussy, another body. And that's so sad. And it's often, you know, men in general tend to be this way, but mostly it seems it's the black males. The black males are lacking. Imagine that he's juggling you with three or more other women and possibly also an unknown number of male sex par partners because many of them today, they are boldly coming out as not bae, oh, not gay, not gay. They are bi <laughs> and proud. Imagine that they engage in anal sex unprotected then visit you 
or show show up with, "Hi, honey, I'm home." They don't remember your name, <laughs> and they don't remember your name because you're not important. You're not important to them. You're rendered dispensable, disposable, transitory, a side chick, side piece, not the main, never significant. So you're renamed, my love or honey, of course, and dear, honey, always, and dear. Sometimes I hate dear. Don't ever call me dear. In fact, don't call me any of these. Terms of endearment. Don't call me my love. Don't call me honey. Do not call me dear. Never call me dear. African males often use that word, dear. Many years ago, I noticed on American TV programs,、um, the the men, the men would always call. Let's say the man is married, and it's a some kind of comedy sitcom, and. He refer he calls his wife dear, but it's kind of like she's annoying and she's nagging and he's trying to just pacify her. He doesn't want to upset her, but he's pissed and he will be very kind of passive aggressively saying, "Yes, dear, yes, dear." It's so irritating. They call us not our names, but darling, sweetie, sugar, baby, sweetheart. Dude, bay, pet—that's the British. The British say pet. You're a little animal. Amour. The French, chérie. Stella. Microbino mio. That's Italiano. Microbino mio. So that is like my little microbe. <laughs> And no, they don't really. Mean any of these words, but the words replace your own name. The terms of endearment can be and are interchangeable. So I can be dear, I can be bay, I can be sweetheart, I can be baby, I can be pet, I can be my love, I can be honey, cherry, amor, Stella, microbino mio. I can be a microbe. How charming, huh? <laughs> There's nothing special about you. There's nothing personal, but the female is societally conditioned to bask in the glow of my love, honey, baby, sweetie. We all fall for it. This reduces us, and the male sex partners believes themselves. They believe themselves to be alpha. I'm an alpha male. They're great males. Dominant males, dick slingers, especially whorish in nature and behavior, so they are common, as common as community genitalia. Everyone can have a turn, but they are not machines, though. Their behavior and habits, practices, shines a light of whoredom on them, and society loves the man, the ladies' man. And the ladies love him, but only because they don't know of his extracurricular activities with the side pieces like chicken nuggets, chicken nuggets who will be eaten next. And the male sexual partner feeds on honey or bay or my love, thereby continuing the cycle. Promiscuous males, especially over the age of forty to fifty, are the worst. Or forty to fifty and over, they're the worst. They're trying to prove their desirability. Many who, as little boys, had been abandoned by their parents, left with childcare givers, grandparents, aunties, grannies, uncles, cousins, siblings. Yes, oftentimes, the older siblings have to be the caregivers to the little baby brother or sister. Mother's love was absent. Mother unavailable, no attention from mother, no proper bond or connection. The little boys miss their mothers and long for their fathers. They crave parental love. They are deprived and needy. They look and smile at everyone. 
They're friendly like dogs, good-natured doggies, and good-time boys. Promiscuous, slutty, whorish, and easy, lacking self-control and self-respect with pride. Because they're getting laid, getting pussy, having sex, and they have their choice of several vaginas. Changing vulvas, exchanging bodily fluids, spreading energy, and spreading infections, STIs, STDs, playing with pathogens, mouth on booty hole, mouth on penis that was in a booty hole hours before and on another body, little boys in adult male bodies, all feeling empty inside. They hide true feelings on thrilling rides, but don't remember your name, mistaken Karen. They're mistaking Karen for Susie. I was actually shocked, but not surprised when my friend last night confided in me. Well, he, I don't know, he told me that he usually has three women on rotation at any given time. So that's, you know, when he feels he wants to get off, He'll call this one, and if she's not available, then he'll call the other. And if she's not available, then the other. And whoever is available first gets the dick first. And I'm like, ew. And I asked him, like, I I was unaware that the men I'd known, maybe they hid it very well, but I was this, I was it. I was everything. I was her. I was special. I was different, unique, and I was worthy. I was worthy, and thus, he didn't need to have extracurriculars. He didn't need to have outside pieces. Because there was me, a deli pie. But unfortunately, it appears that many males, apart from, you know, there are those guys who can't get pussy to save their lives. And then there are those like, you know, the Libra, the Gemini, the Leo, it's... I know, I know, it's, it's just a sun sign and there are other signs, you know, the moon and Venus, blah, blah, blah. No, it's just I'm going to go by the sun signs because I've observed those the most and I've been involved with them. Taurus does it as well. Taurus can be very friendly and very whorish. And yet they in their profiles, they are like, oh, they're very loyal and they don't cheat. I have, you know, I, I can give you a list of Taurian male and female who have cheated and have I mean, have, you know, they, they, it's just large numbers. I know many. Libra the same. Gemini. You know, all the friendly, sociable ones, they like, the, they have the gift of gab. They love to chit-chat. And they're so friendly. You see, when you see Aries, Aries is always looking pissed off. Aries is always looking angry. Because Aries is angry. Because Aries looks at the rest of you and is like, Ew, you're disgusting. You don't discern it's like anything goes for you nothing is special nothing is sacred you're common and you're coarse and i don't want anything to do with the likes of you that's how i think when i see these you know some people they are a little more picky you know they they carefully select they're selective and then there are those that you know you'd be very you must be careful with them they're the ones who always sick, always have a cold, always got something because they're spreading it around and they're getting around. And it's so sad to see. And here we are, the children of these promiscuous males and in some cases women, we grow up with these issues. You know, um, my father was reputed to have had over that I supposedly have over 200 siblings around the world. Most of whom I've never heard of, don't, I've never seen, never met, don't know. So at some point in my dating career, I was actually very fearful of hooking up with black males because I never knew like what's, what's the possibility that this guy could possibly be my brother, you know? Because my dad was like a rolling boner. His dick was everywhere. All And you know, I have siblings who are my age. That is so revolting to me. So when I 
try to clarify with a sister, a sister I met by chance. A sister. My my father fathered another girl who is maybe a year or, 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 or so older than me. And um, we just met by chance on the island one day. It was the strangest chance encounter. But she was my sister and I'd never known her, never heard of her. It's just that we were both very dark skinned. It's funny because today we are kind of caramel. <laughs> but... I met her and because we're very formal on the island and I asked her name, she gave me her name, a full name, and she had the same last name as I. And I said, by the way, is your father so-and-so? And she says, yeah. I was like, what? We're sisters. That's bizarre. That's bizarre. So I never really knew my father. I met him a few times, but to not to establish any kind of connection or bond. And it's sad. It's really sad and pathetic because later on I met this sister because I left the island, went to Canada. She went to the U.S. years later and um, she went to New York. Now she's in Florida. But we connected on Facebook and I asked her about what a cousin had told me when I went back I went back home on holiday and I met a cousin from England, somebody I never heard of, somebody I didn't know him, but he was informing me of my father's shenanigans and he said to me that my that I have approximately like 200 siblings worldwide. And I was in shock. I was like, ew, gross. What kind of dick is that? And it didn't fall off? It didn't fall off? Oh my goodness. And this went into all these different holes? That is so gross. So um, when I told that to my sister... She corrected me. She says, no, no, he, not that much. She said, not that much, not 200. I said, well, how many then? She says, well, when last we counted, we were at 53. I'm like, holy crap, 53 siblings. I have 53 brothers and sisters worldwide. And I probably know only like, and I only know one, like really know one. And I know of like one, two, because I've interacted with them. And then I'm aware of another like three or four because I've seen pictures. But then the rest of them, no, 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 and no. And I think it's sad. And I just want to say to you, black males, I, I understand that you were at a disadvantage when you were little boys. You didn't receive the love and affection and attention that you deserve to have. And in your older age, you're seeking it. But you need to be aware that it, you, you don't think, I don't think you think highly enough of yourselves. That's why you're spreading it so thin. And you're thinking, I'm the man. I'm great. Look at all the pussy I'm getting. And you, you know how I know that you know you're wrong? Just the fact that you hide it and you have what you call side pieces. So the women don't even know about each other. And in some cases they do because some of the women also have low to no self-esteem. And they're willing to put up with any and everything. So if you tell me that you are a whore, you know, and I'm not looking to pay for a piece of dick, which I would never do. But if you want to be like my partner, a sexual partner, or any kind of partner... And I know that you are a whore, meaning that your dick is community peen. Then I will not really want to have anything to do with you sexually. So I'll be very mindful when I'm in your company to not become intoxicated, to not become, you know, um, yeah, to not get involved in alcohol or drugs. I'm drugs meaning, you know, the herb. I won't smoke weed and have a drink with you because then, you know, I may lose my inhibition and who knows what could happen. And I don't want that. I like special, I like unique, I like I like something to be my own and I can cherish, cherish even worship. So I can worship a man that I know is not so common, so easy, sleazy and teasy. I don't want this type of male. And unfortunately, they're a dime a dozen. You just blink your eyes, here comes another one, blink again, there's another one, blink again. And that's unfortunately the, the quality or lack thereof that black women have to um, deal with and unfortunately many of them actually put up with it and accept that into them their lives into their bodies and that's to me just disgusting i am domina della pie mistress sasha storm